Excuse me, little dog, again. Ugh. Well, guys, I just did this entire rant. Just did this entire video. Went to put it on YouTube, and there was no video on the camera. So uh, I just sat here and talked to myself for 30 minutes, but since I do not have a life, I guess I will just sit here and talk to myself again for 30 and uh, give it one more chance to bring kind of Doomer 101 uh, for anybody new to this rabbit hole. And oh yeah, so where is it? Once again, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, but another red flag warning windy day here in Texas here on uh, this beautiful, uh, it is Wednesday, April 6, 2022. So let me, since I'm well rehearsed on this rant, let me just do it all over again. Oh, Jesus. Uh, so yesterday I was over here in the mainstream media proclaiming right here on Yahoo News that it is not the end of the world. It is not the end of the world. It only seems like it. That we are not doomed. It only seems like it. And now I open up Yahoo News. Good old LA Times, the Los Angeles Times, and good for them, have taken issue with that article yesterday and have announced it is official in the mainstream media that we are doomed and it is the end of the world. Thank you, LA Times, for finally uh, a little bit of breath of fresh air. Now, of course, this article, uh, as I was reading it uh, a half hour ago, uh, it, it does, it starts out really doomy, but you know, remember, guys, it is the mainstream media, so it's going to be a little bit apocalyptic. I think they use the H word maybe twice in the uh, in the story, but you know, this story would not have been published one year ago today. You would not have seen this article in the LA Times or the uh, or Yahoo News. But uh, before I launch into it, uh, I guess in the same edition of this morning's paper, in the letters to the editor, we have a letter from 26-year-old Audrey Stanton. This is what 26-year-old Audrey Stanton uh, has to say to the LA Times editors, blah, blah, blah. While I appreciate a lot of your reporting, I am baffled by some of your choices. Why was the climate piece, you, you know, the LA Times review of the new uh, watered down, green washed, a uh, worthless do-nothing document called the latest uh, dire, uh, damning, stark UN report. Why was the climate piece not front page news that the United Nations just warned Earth is on track to be unlivable, is massive life-altering information that should be front and center. The more we treat climate change as a non-urgent issue, the less time we will have to fix it. <laughs> there you go. I am 26 years old and watching any hope for my future being ripped away from me. Yes, I am 26 years old and watching any hope for my future being ripped away from me. Uh, there you go. Oh, this is, they have several. Uh, oh, I see it's a whole 
list of letters to the editor sounding a lot like that 26 year old. Uh, okay, we have all sorts of doomers in the letters to the editor, so maybe in a response to those several letters, they came up with a column by this fellow named Nick Goldberg. Uh, I'm not sure who Nick is, whether he's just a regular LA Times reporter, uh, given somewhat of free reign by the editors, or whether it doesn't say who Nick is. But anyway, this is what Nick has to say. Uh, about the latest dire UN report. <clears throat> Take it away. The end of the world is coming, even if you have heard it all before. The periodic reports of the UN's International Panel on Climate Change are lapsing into self-parody. This is your last warning, they say. Get a move on. Don't sit idly by. Fix the problem. Now. We mean it. Yes. <clears throat> I am continually amazed that the IPC scientists don't throw up their collective hands in disgust at humanity's inability to awaken from its slumbers and stop issuing reports altogether. I think this is probably the most intelligent suggestion I have heard in the mainstream media is just stop issuing these reports. Just stop issuing them. There you go. Uh, as they make no difference into what is happening on this planet. But instead, they, I guess the UN, uh, keep holding out faint glimmers, faint glimmers of, faint glimmers of, of, uh, uh, and encouragement that maybe, maybe, just maybe, we will rise to the occasion. I can't help but wonder if that is just because, well, any other message, meaning we cannot and or will not rise to the occasion, is inconceivable, meaning inconceivable uh, to uh, anyone without a brain. Anybody with a brain knows even if we could rise to the occasion, we won't. Nick Goldberg knows this as well as his editor and publisher. According to the panel's newest report released Monday, the world is right on track to blow past the critically important goal of limiting global warming to one and a half degrees C, a target set nearly a decade ago in the Paris Climate Agreement. If we fail to hold warming to that level, scientists have long said it will no longer be possible to avoid many of the more dire consequences of climate, climate change. There is no big secret about the parade of catastrophes that will follow if, I would say as, emissions continue to rise unabated. More out of control storms, dangerous heat waves, harrowing floods, raging wildfires, how many wildfires are raging right now in the great state of Texas. Don't know if these wildfires in Texas are getting any press outside of Texas. And other what the report calls extreme events unprecedented in the observational record, close quote. And that 
is just the beginning. Water scarcity and heat will lead to food shortages and malnutrition. Changing agricultural patterns will force mass migration of tens of millions of people. Conflict and war will result from heightened competition for minerals, resources, and water. Economies will collapse. This is the stuff of apocalyptic books and cataclysmic sci-fi movies. Yet, people around the world have mostly responded like children holding their fingers in their ears and yelling, nanny nanny nanny, to drown out the bad news. We have wrung our hands, but changed our behavior in only incremental ways. We have taken actions that might have made a difference 25 years ago, but you know, these individual consumer and lifestyle choices are now too little, too late, after decades of stubborn, irresponsible neglect, denial, and passivity. You don't have to be crazy anymore to climb up on a soapbox and proclaim that the end of the world is nigh. Yes. As far as I can tell from the brightest scientific minds in the world, only sweeping transformational change in the way we live and, wor and work can avert disaster. Only plunging massive amounts of money into the, bra into the problem and adopting broad behavioral changes can protect us, ending our reliance on coal, gas, oil, and other fossil fuels needs to be accelerated because we are running out of time and alternatives. Now, of course, since this is not quite full doomer, I would have to remind Nick, we have, we're not running out of time we ran out of time probably before Nick was born, and there are no alternatives to fossil fuels. Okay? There are no alternatives to fossil fuels. <clears throat> there has been some movement, to be sure, which accounts for the IPCC's Glimmer of Glimmer of Glimmer of Hope. Clean energy technology has progressed, although overall carbon emissions continue to rise, the rate of that growth has slowed. The use, what was it last year, 6.1%? Uh, anyway, the use of renewable energy has expanded, just not enough. And of course, do not forget the bedrock of all apocaloptimism, even to this fellow. Do not forget the United States, for the moment, has returned to the Paris Climate Agreement fold. You know, the uh, pointless, toothless, worthless Paris joke, Paris Climate Agreement. You know, that fold. But the solutions are not big enough to address the problem. So why have we been unable to respond appropriately? Neuroscientists, psychologists, and scholars of human behavior have tried to answer those questions. 
Harvard psychology professor Daniel, Daniel Gilbert argues that we, meaning modern humans, react even instinctively to protect ourselves if a baseball is hurtling toward our heads, but we are not biologically wired to prepare for big, slow-moving threats. Here in the U.S., our democratic political system is ill-suited to deliver policies that require sacrifice and pain today in exchange for future gain. Politicians who support such strategies get booted from office. Can you say uh, Jimmy Carter to Ronald Reagan? Our economic system, otherwise known as global capitalism, our economic system rewards corporate behavior that maximizes short-term profits for shareholders rather than long-term planning for a better, more stable world. Although climate change is a slow-moving and often to some clueless morons imperceptible, in, imperceptible threat that does not mean it is not imminent, it is not a far away crisis coming for our grandchildren's grandchildren. It is barreling toward us right now. In fact, it is upon us, yet we consistently fail to meet the challenge. Scientists have been aware since the late 19th century that adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere could raise global temperatures. Half a century ago, melting ice in Antarctica had already been documented. By the 1970s, ExxonMobil understood its own role in the ocean warming and the melting of polar ice. The first international conference to address climate change was held in Stockholm 50 years ago. When I saw that story about the most recent IPCC report, I nearly ignored it because, just like everyone else, I have read it a million times and written about it a thousand times. I knew it would frighten me and make me feel powerless. That is why such reports can seem counterproductive. Counter People grow inured, inured. They compartmentalize. They get depressed and vow not to bring children into the world. Thank you. The one consumer and lifestyle choice that you can make at this point that will have anything to do with the state of the planet or anything else, although at this point it is more for out of consideration for your own unborn child than it is for the planet. Uh, this planet's going down uh, no matter, you know what I'm saying, but every uh, child who does not have to deal with it, uh, the better. Or people flip to the sports pages, tell themselves other news is more urgent, you know, than the imminent collapse of society, humanity, and the planet. They tell themselves that other news is more urgent than the single biggest story to face humanity since we climbed down from the trees. Six people shot to death in Sacramento. Ukrainians massacred as Russian soldiers pulled out of Bukha. And of course, the Grammy highlights. The, the Grammy highlights, I am so thrilled. I cannot tell you one 
person nominated for a Grammy in 2022. But let's not kid ourselves. We can click past the IPCC report, but the facts remain serious trouble is coming and we are not doing nearly enough about it. Yes, not doing nearly enough about it. Uh, I would call uh, pressing the accelerator to the floor of our SUV, burning that $4 a gallon gas uh, qualifies as not doing nearly enough about it. But anyway, for the second time, I am going to wrap up today's chronicle of the collapse and say get out there and uh, don't have children while you still can. And with that, me and the little dog are for the second time in 30 minutes are going to figure out what to do with the rest of this beautiful day in the collapse. Now I think what happened is, ah, is that this camera went off right at this point. I'm getting ready to turn you off camera. Say bye-bye.